Welcome back. If you have a cosmic curiosity and have always looked up to the sky and wondered, huh, what if, then this program is for you. I'm here today with Aggie Cobrin, who is the managing editor of Ad Astra Magazine, which is the magazine of the National Space Society. She's also a production manager and has her own uh, management company in Irvine. So she can provide a lot of services and a ton of information for us. Aggie, you've been here before. We're so excited to have you back. Thank you Thank for you. jumping on. I know you have like so much stuff going on. So what's new in the world of space? <laughs> so much stuff going on. The newest thing, the biggest thing right now is the conference that we're going to be doing in Los Angeles. I run a lot of space conferences. You know that you've been to some of them. I have. Yes. I um, ISDC is the formal, is the name we go by. It's the International Space Development Conference. And it is the conference, the biggest conference of the National Space Society. And it is in Los Angeles this year. So we rotate that around the country. You came to visit when we were on the East Coast. We're on the West Coast this, this May. It's Memorial Day weekend. And we have tons of stuff going on. there. So it's a wonderful live activity. I absolutely can recommend it. And I know because I peaked on your program, because that's what I do. <laughs> yes, uh, as you should. <laughs> some of some of the activities are really extraordinary. I mean, you've got meet an astronaut. Um, you've got talks that take you beyond Earth. I think most people haven't heard of the National Space Society. So tell us a little bit more about who they are. Sure. Actually, this is the 50th anniversary of this organization. Um, the National Space Society is one of those down-to-earth type organizations for people who love space. So we have a range of members. It is a membership organization, but much more than that now. Um, we have a range of members that are parts of NASA and JPL and astronauts and a lot of authors and a lot of people who are involved in every aspect you can imagine of space. And lots and lots of students. So when you come to one of our conferences, it not only has many hundreds of adults in the space industry, it has hundreds and hundreds of students from all over the world interested in the space industry and anybody else who's interested in space. It's really quite a fascinating group because the range is almost anything. If you are just like what you said, one of those folks who comes outside, looks up to the sky and wonders, those people are there. And I was one of those before I started to do all of this. Um, right up to astronauts who've been on the moon. You know, it's it's like this amazing range of people involved, topics involved. I'll go over some of the sessions we're going to have, keynote speakers. Um, fun, fun little note is we will actually have William Shatner there this year. Uh, not for long, but he did get an award and he is going to come and accept his award and be there in person. So that's kind of the space industry. <laughs> we go back and we do have science fiction there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it it'll be a lot. It's a marriage of space and Hollywood, right? It's a marriage of space and Hollywood to an extent, sci fi to an extent, and um, the future, you know, really the future and what's coming. And that is every day something is happening right now in space. Every day there's, there's rockets taking off at, at Kennedy Space Center and elsewhere. Um, there's so much conversation going on. We have landings on the moon. It happened to fall on its side, but it landed on the moon the other day. Um, I heard this morning that that some of the issues are that it's not going to get enough sunlight now because of the way it fell and some other aspects and some of the equipment. So I think they're just figuring out right now what's what's going to happen now that it took a little topple. But just the fact that it landed there, you know, we're going back now to 50 years ago. You know, we haven't landed on the moon in a really long time. And, and it's spectacular. I didn't spectacular. realize that until I was reading about this. It Because it, it, to me, it feels like the space program has always been there and that it's always active. But Well, it has been, but space shuttles didn't land. You know, they went to the International Space Station. We've had the space station, but that's lower Earth or orbit. That's not that's not going to the moon. That's not now all this discussion about going to Mars. Right. Um, you know, there's so many things happening now and the capabilities, you know, we didn't have these capabilities thanks to SpaceX, among other um, companies out there. There are launches 
twice a week now that are going up. I mean, I've been there. I've watched them. NSS, National Space Society, now has their corporate office at Kennedy Space Center, which is a huge advantage when I go because I get to wander around and see rockets taken off. It's also an advantage for our members because they can come and visit us there. So um, that's been a new development this year. And then the conference this year is called No Limits. Um, Because that's really where we're heading right now. It's no limits to everything that's going on, to the growth and all of this, to the excitement of it, and getting people back involved. You know, it it was tough to get really involved in space shuttles. It was fun, and it was fun to see what was going on, but there wasn't the same excitement like what you're talking about. There wasn't the same excitement as there was in the 60s and 70s with actual um, people going to the moon, you know, all all of that excitement. That changed just going to the um, space station and just going into lower earth orbit and things like that, that changed quite a bit. So that's, that's what's happening now. Those are the big, big developments. And a conference like this goes over all of it. And so the other big thing I think on people's mind at this point is space tourism. Do you mm-hmm. guys delve into that at all? Um, we actually run a conference called Space Tourism, and it's going to be the day before. I was going to mention that. In the International Space Development Conference is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm looking at the exact dates here. If you're noticing, you're looking down. May 23rd to May 26th. On May 22nd, at the same place, and there are other clients of mine that I kind of joined the two conferences together, there's a one-day event that's called Space Tourism, and that is completely about tourism. That's about the person that wants to just be a space tourist whether it's to on a balloon to lower Earth orbit, whether it's on one of these, you know, 10 minute rise to space or hopefully someday going to the moon and Mars. But it's all about tourism as, a, as opposed to ISDC, which is really about space development and the future and space settlement. So it's a different angle. But the so two run into each other. Is, that really is the point of um, of the National Space Society is about creating civilization. Yes, How yes, very much so. Right. Yeah, very, very much so. That is their mandate. That's what they were. That's what they've been talking about for 40 plus years when everybody thought they were so silly and this was never going to happen. And, you know, why would you even talk about it? Now it's become a reality and people aren't saying that anymore. But it was always a dream for the members of the National Space Society and um, started with Gerard O'Neill, who had this amazing dream. And Jerry's Kids is a well-known group around the world who have really been involved in all this. That's where um, Jeff Bezos came from. He was one of Jerry's kids um, oh, wow. at Princeton. He was a professor. Um, O'Neill was a professor at Princeton, had this beautiful idea about going out into space and um, excited many, many influential people. The biggest of them was was Jeff Bezos. And look where he's gone. So, yeah. you know, you look at this and it's quite amazing. We've had him at our conferences before. He's been delightful to work with, which is nice to say. And um, we've had many, many astronauts, including Buzz Aldrin, many times. We've got um, ast- shuttle astronauts um, more these days because a lot of the uh, older astronauts are quite a bit older now. We've had them over the years. We've had several of them over the years. But now it's it's more of the space shuttle astronauts and more of the up and coming, you know, where are we going to and who's trying to be on that team and, you know, the dreams of what could be. Do you find that that there's a genuine mix of adults and kids or young young and old in this whole conversation it's there's a genuine mix at our conference because we have competitions for the students we have competitions for adults too but we have numerous competitions and we have thousands of students apply for those and they come in from all over the world they come in predominantly eastern europe romania and india but also from europe from um Australia, from Ireland, from Scotland, from England, um, several European countries, they they are all involved in the competitions that we do. And the winners, we have 20,000 plus, I believe, that have applied. Of those, the winning teams come in. They get to actually do presentations in front of real space people. They get to do poster sessions, which are really remarkable to see. And they do these beautiful poster sessions. And there's time for for everybody to look at them. So we have a really big mixture of young and old as a result of that. It's a big combination across the board. Um, and then others, as I said, that just love space. They just want to be there. And in fact, our ad campaign, if you look at ISDC, um, and it's isdc.nss.org for the call letters for it, is really um, about people who just love space and want to be there, want to be part of this, you know, having a voice in all of this, getting to talk to people who are in the industry, who are part of the industry, who have been 
astronauts. You know, it's just such a great place where you can just wander around and talk to astronauts. And you can. You can sit down with them. You can have conversations. We have heads of companies there. We have people from JPL, from NASA, from all over that are just happy to talk to anybody that's there. It's really a wonderful thing to see. I think that that was the thing that stood out for me most of all was when I visited the conference a couple of years ago, that everyone was just so excited to talk to other people who shared this interest. When I say cosmic curiosity, it mm -hmm. I mean like a really big curiosity, but also curiosity of the cosmos. And apparently they don't have enough people to talk to. So being able to hang out with your tribe is is really yes. meaningful. And yeah. I think that just kindled a whole new interest um, for me. And I really had never thought about it. So in terms of encouraging those of our viewers who are hearing this now and saying, hmm, interesting, I'd say get curious mm -hmm. and just go see what's going on. Aggie, tell us more. You said you would share some of the uh, the events and the activities. Sure. Um, as I said, William Shatner will be there to get an award. Um, we've got the chief engineer from JPL, Rob Manning, who is just an incredible speaker. He's spoken at our conferences before. We've got Alan Stern. And Alan's a really interesting one because Alan was the head of the Pluto mission, number one. I mean, he's been involved for 20 years, 20 plus years, doing wonderful, exciting things. But actually, this past year, he was on the last um, voyage of the Titan down to the Titanic before the catastrophic one. And he was on a SpaceX launch, uh, not a SpaceX, I'm sorry, Blue Origin launch this year. So he did two really outstanding, interesting things in one year. He's really coming to talk about that, although his background and he's spoken to us before about the Pluto mission and, and the incredible journey that's been on and the incredible pictures it sent back. Um, so a lot of really wonderful things there. We also have, um, have you heard of the film A Million Steps? I believe it's called A Million Steps. Jose Hernandez is a gentleman's name. He's an astronaut that is of Hispanic um, background origin. And he, they, Netflix did an incredible movie. I watched it once I heard he may be at our conference. I watched the film. It's a wonderful film on Netflix. It's his story of starting out in the fields, picking picking fruits and vegetables in the fields with his parents and ending up an astronaut with NASA. And it's this heart-wrenching, you know, you're kind of in tears as you're watching it and his struggle to actually become an astronaut and go up to the International Space Station. And he did. Um, he's going to be one of our speakers there. So you hear the story of somebody that went through all of that versus the JPL scientists versus the the Star Star Trek kind of, we're going to have a sci-fi section with Star Trek actors as well. We have a host who's coming along, a hostess who... Um, was also a featured actress on Star Trek. So we're really intermixing here a little bit. And we have a great seniors rate. And I know where your show focuses. Um, we have a great senior rate for anybody that wants to come in, whether it's for a day or for the entire conference. And if you go to isdc.nss.org, you can see all the pricing there. And um, seniors can come for really next to nothing because we would love to have more and more of them there. We'd love to have more of everybody there because it's such a fun experience. Right? Well, and the one thing I tried to do, it didn't work out just because of scheduling, but I was really excited to bring my teenage niece and nephew mm -hmm. because I really felt like it was a great opportunity to play with them together. And, you know, just like you're sitting on the moon right now on screen with Earth yes. behind you, right? <laughs> I, I am. Like, what a great opportunity to explore these things together with kids and me to get their perspective, mm -hmm. them to hear from the experts, which was which was really mind boggling. I remember hearing from one of the heads of NASA, and she talked. She was just. I, I think I was just mesmerized by. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really fascinating work. hearing. Yeah, you hang on every word. You, so, you hang on every word. We have a female um, astronaut coming as well, Susan Kilrain, who just wrote a children's book. So she's sort of, you know, coming from all sides of it. She's now an author. We had se we have several authors there every time that have written books that have been to space, written books on it, or just researched, a lot of researchers as well. And, um, you know, bringing, bringing young people, I think, is such an important thing because it awakens this in them. You know, there's a lot of curiosity that... 
nobody really talks about these things sometimes. And you bring them to something like that and they can, it can change their entire lives. They can meet one person, have one conversation. And, and the sad thing is we get tons and tons of students there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students. Most of them aren't American students. Mm -hmm. It's always amazing to us that we'll get, you know, we'll get some local students, college students and things. Um, we might get a hundred, but we'll get many hundreds of foreign students come. And that's always been fascinating to me that we, we just, don't and we promote it we promote to the schools we promote to the colleges we try to get particularly local students there when we have an event like this um and we just don't seem to be able to get lots of them we do other conferences that are student focused conferences mm -hmm. and those we have more american students at but for some reason and maybe they just feel like this is out of their league or something i'm not sure i, I wish we could get more students there well then let me encourage our viewers if you've got nieces and nephews grands minis, whatever, or just, you know, strange kids in the neighborhood that you would like <laughs> to bring along. That's that right. I just, I really felt that it would have been even more extraordinary for me um, as a participant to be able to go through it with a young person and really hear their yeah. perspective on things. So I really encourage everyone to do it. Aggie, give us the um, the website again, where we can get all the It's I, the letters ISDC dot nss.org org and, and the dates of the event are memorial the Day. dates are may 23rd to may 26th and the date for the space tourism conference is may 22nd and it's a separate conference separate entrance fee so i can't give them quite the rate that i can give them on isdc but it's also very interesting and it's a different slant because it is all about tourism Right. Um, and and that's, that's where people's people's real curiosity is right now. The fact, like you said, in the 60s and 70s, it was a dream. I mean, the stuff that was happening was amazing. But now the fact that there is even a term such as mm -hmm. tourism, and a community and a community that's yeah. working towards space tourism, knowing that five to 10 years from now, that is going to be an active, active community. Um, we'll be on the moon. I have no doubt we will be on the moon with everything that's happening right now. Mars, I think, is a little further out. But um, <laughs> certainly settlements and certainly the moon, we're getting awfully close. The technology is there pretty much. I mean, it's, it's money. You know, it's always money. It comes down to sure. companies that can afford it and people that can afford to do it. And, and how's this all going to come together? But the ability is now there. And um, I, will, I will hold up the copy of the magazine. This is, if you can see it, this oh, is the Astra. latest version of Ad Astra magazine, which comes out four times a year. It's quarterly. Um, it's the magazine of the National Space Society. It is in a thousand bookstores. I don't think you know that, Lauren. I got it into all the Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million. Wow. I don't know what else, but it is in many, many, many bookstores now across the U.S. It has been for over a year now, a year and a half. And anybody can pick it up there or subscribe to it separately at Ad Astra magazine.com, which is another website, Stat Astra. And you can also get to that website by going to the nss.org website. So there's lots of different websites you can go to, but it's the National Space Society, nss.org. And you can link to all of these. And the magazine, again, is just kind of for people interested. That's why it was so important to get it into bookstores, because it wasn't just for people in the industry. And I think I mentioned to you, I'm speaking in a couple of nights from now for a women's group. And they just sent me a whole slew of questions. And they're such intelligent questions that I went, wow, number one, they should be reading the magazine because most of those answers are in the magazine. I can't answer them. They're they're very you know detailed. But I just thought, you know, the world's just getting so much more sophisticated about this because they see it in newspapers. They hear it on TV. There's so much more going on that um, they're really- well, And people like you are bringing it, meaning the organization itself could have been just isolated on its own, talking to itself without someone who has the ability to actually bring this stuff forward to bring it to the public in the ways that we can receive it. Um, that I think is is really special. And so thank you for that. And if I recall, you taught me last time, Ad Astra means to the stars. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I hope that that is where this event will take everyone. I'll have to check my calendar and see if I can't put it on there too. I hope you can join us. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll look forward to hearing more about space because we'll definitely have you back. Thank you, Lauren. And we'll Good to see you. Back.